Hello my friends, welcome, I'm John Silva. So if you want to learn how to use the new shape builder on Affinity Designer, watch this video until the end because I'm gonna show you the best techniques that you can use in order to use this shape builder and how you can set up the guidelines to make logo designs, okay? Let's get started. All right, the first step that we need to do it is to create a new document. First of all, I will go here on top, file, new and then i'll set up this to the web and then key f80 this setting here which is for me quite enough the very first that you need to do it is to plan your idea is to plan the references it is to build what you want so to get start i have here this reference and then i suggest you always try to get the idea that you want in order to do this i'm gonna use my which makes a finish brushes where you can download all my new course that's gonna be available to you i will leave here the link in that case look at this i will understand how the shapes works so what we have here a rounded very rounded shape we have a straight line here below we have the body that can be try to make things in rounded and then add a square as you can see, I'm just planning the idea. So what you get here already, it is a kind of logo design just like that. Of course, it's not perfect because we are just planning. Add here from the eyes, we can make this a bit more rounded. So to make this, of course, more with good proportions, I recommend you to study more the golden ratio. But in that case, this is going to be not very complex. I want to make this simple for you. In this stage that I'm doing here review, it is just to understand the shape that you are creating. In that case, I want to make this more simplified. So we have this very first version. I will create a new layer and then I will start to think like, hey, a huge circle. And then I want to, to divide everything here in middle, like a pizza. And then look, to get this in good proportions, I'm just uh, using here, for example, circles in between. And then here in this point, I can add our wings. We can add the eyes. Okay, we got this result for now, very simple. Okay, very simple. And then I want to set up the grid system. All right, to do this, I will decrease the opacity. First of all, I will switch to the designer persona. You can activate now on view, go to the show rulers. This option now, you have the rulers and then you can click here on top and drag in order to build the grid that you want. So I'm placing here. We can adjust this as we create the shapes. As you can see, we have just created the guides and just keep in mind that you also can add the grid just to help you to get used more to the nice workflow show grid you can go here and then you can go in grid and axis this option you can go to the basic and set up this to one two and eight and then activate the divisions to two okay nice and by doing this we'll be able to uh, to have the grid look before we do the vector i will show you some nice techniques that you can apply in your project Example, let's say you want to insert the shapes already let's say you grab here the ellipse tool and then you add you're gonna see that your shape is going to be above of your sketch and there is something that i'm very happy to to add in my workflow which is the x-ray view mode which is this wireframe view mode you can enable here in view uh, mode and then wireframe x-ray once you enable this option you can see in between of the shapes which is means that if you are creating let's say multiple shapes just like this so if you activate here this option you can see in between all right so right now i'm going to identify where are the circles as you can see i will uh, create here the circles that is going to apply a smooth curve here for example i, I don't want to have this curve uh, having a gap so to not have this gap I will try to match this node here onto the guideline that is going to create now I will create more circles I will add here for the eyes I will add a new circle in this area and then you can add onto here fitting the, the point the middle point to the last point and right now what we got if we deactivate this wireframe we got this uh, bunch of you know uh, shapes all right pay attention to this because i will show you how the shape builder works first of all if you enable the shape builder we have these options which is the merge subtract and create a shape from the select area for now i want to make this simple i just want to select the areas that is outside of my project here this one here i don't need this so what i do it is to press delete if if i want to select this area here if I just select and delete, 
I will get a not nice result that I want. I want to slice this on the middle. What you can do it is to do what I'll show you. I want to create a rectangle, a new rectangle on here on top, just like that. And what I want to do it is to select all of these shapes on here, which is as you can see here. Oh, I'm using the X-ray mode as you can see. Then I'll keep everything selected. Shape Builder tool. Go here to the delete select areas. So as you can see, if I over the mouse, you can be able to see what's going to be deleted. And I want to delete this area here, which is for me what I want. I will click here, here. There you go. And right now we got this result. And what I want to do it is to have this area measured and then I want to subtract this area here. Okay, so I want to have this kind of result. I want to re remove this error. How can I do this? Let me show you. So to have a nice precision, I will insert here the rectangle. Let me activate again the wireframe mode and then I will insert from here onto this area. Right now I will keep everything selected. And then my friend, I will just use the shape builder using the subtract and then I will just click here one time. Just click and then affinity has deleted this error that I wanted. So right now we got this very nice result as you can see here. Remember about the eyes, it's here below. I will bring this up and then it's here. So right now I'm going to select the shape builder tool. Of course, I need to keep everything selected in order to apply the shape builder. What I want to do it is to merge this error with this error. But before we do that, you need to see what's going to be merged. If I do this right now, it's going to merge this error that I don't want to merge. To solve this problem, I suggest you to create a new rectangle just to slice this error, just like this. You now can use the add, and then go here, and then you're gonna have this nice result. Again, you can see that if I want, I can also merge this error. So I will get even a nice result based on this curve here. Because one of the secrets I will tell you about logo designs it is to have a good proportion. Don't try to use, you know, curves that has, you know, different kind of angles. I think that with more you align the objects following a circle, better results you're gonna have. So this shape here, I don't need this anymore. I can simply delete. Also, can you see that we have the shapes here. What I can do, it is basically add a new rectangle onto here. Remember to keep the snap activated in order to have a better alignment. So select both of them, shape builder, and then you can select this area here. Keep everything selected so to have a better result. Select this one, this one, and then, oh, very nice. I can add this one as well into our same shape like that. At this point, I don't need to have any more my sketch behind so I can deactivate from here. And then I will select all of it, all of these shapes, and then I will click here on top, which is the divide. If I click in this option, it's going to divide all right, the shapes. This is what I want because now I can basically, for example, let me merge this, I can add. Uh, what I really like about the divide at this point, it is that I will start to add different colors to this shape that we did right now. To do this, I can simply deactivate my grids and then I will start to add the colors. In that case, you can, of course, uh, compose a new composition for you. I will make this I can be orange and then this will, will be same orange but a bit more red. This one here same. I'll merge this. I'll keep selected. You can use the shape builder to add together just like that. A black just like this. You can also add a new circle here inside. I will make this bigger or to fit this point to this one. This one and make this as white, just like this. Here I'll make this can be black, this one here as well black, this will be white. This shape I will insert inside to add a circle that will follow uh, this corner. So it depends, all right, where you want to apply. You can apply here. There is no nothing you know bad about to add on here. Remember that you can use the same shape and add here inside, uh, here inside I'll paste and make this a bit more you know, dark if you want to create a shading. Now, what I do it is to remove all the outlines. I don't want to have outlines anymore. I'll remove it. The eyes, uh, we can make this, uh, let's make this more like this. I'll duplicate the size so we can make this sort of blue. This one here in black. And then we're gonna add, oh, reaching the corners, right? Don't do this. 
Don't do this. So try to reach the corners precisely. Hold shift to align this in the middle. You need to see these cross lines here. I want to insert a shape here, which is nice. Then keep selected, subtract, and then oh, just do this. Then we're gonna have this area here. It can be in white, but a bit dark to add the, let's say the shadow, oh, which is creates this nice composition. Look at this. Yes, my friends, look at this. What we got here, we got an image as reference just to study the shapes. And then we made a quick sketch, a horrible sketch, I confess you, which was not a perfect one, but I'm happy with the result. Yeah, this was the result using the shape builder, using my techniques in a very simplified way as possible. I truly hope that you really enjoy this tutorial. Keep in mind that I have a new course for Affinity Design 2.0, where we're gonna learn from basics to advanced everything about the new tools, how you can use Affinity Design like a real professional. All right, I promise you, you're gonna learn a lot if you join to this new course. Guys, thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in the next tutorial, right? See you and take care, bye-bye.